Hi, welcome back. This lesson covers some tips to get a better credit score and reduce your personal debt. See all the ads on TV that say, we erase your bad credit or we can remove bankruptcies. Notice your gut reaction is to not believe them. Well, trust your gut. There's no quick fix for a low credit score, but that doesn't mean you are sunk. Quite the contrary. We've spoken to many people who have increased their scores by 100 points or more in less than a year. So first things first, if you want to boost your score, first you need to know what it is. So find out. We've discussed various websites in previous lessons and you can help out our cause by connecting through the videocreditscore.com website. Next, in tackling a hard project of any kind, it's nice to get a few easy victories. When you clean your house, sometimes it's better to tackle the easy jobs first. Question, in your case, what's easier? Paying off thousands of dollars in debt or removing incorrect items on your report that could be as detrimental to your score? Inaccuracies can be fixed in a few months, so that's the place to start. You want to read your report carefully and dispute any inaccuracies you have. So, we talked about disputes in our myths lesson. 25% of you may have score impacting errors, so make sure you do this exercise as it's usually easier than some of the next steps. Okay, you'll need to build a credit snapshot and we'll show you an example. For all your cards, you will need to collect the following information. Your APR, or annual percent rate, or interest rate, your balances, your minimum payment, calculated as 2 to 4 percent of your balance, and your credit limit so that you can calculate your credit utilization ratio. In our example, Jamie has three cards. Yes, we know that's less than average, but we want to keep this simple. She's collected all the info the card, the APR, the balance, her minimum payment, and her credit utilization. So let's take a look back at the credit score pie. High scores are all about managing the credit score factors or the credit score pie. We think it's best to focus on the biggest pieces, which are payment history and amounts owed. Impacting these is critical to a great score and here's how to have an impact. In our example, Jamie has paid her cards late. This could mean not paying at all or paying less than the minimum fee. First off, she must pay the minimum on time each month. So if you've been late, for your sake, you've got to get back on time and not be late again. If you don't have a system for paying on time, get one. You'd be surprised how high a score someone can have just if they pay on time. I saw this firsthand at a university where a few students could pay more than the minimum, yet they had decent scores. So if you're late, your first goal is to be on time with minimum payments, and once you do this, then you want to be on time with more than the minimum. If you can't make your minimum payments each month, you may want to contact a non-for-profit credit counseling organization to assist you. So let's say Jamie has $500 a month to put towards her cards and now that she's disciplined she pays the 308 in minimum fees and then needs to apply the rest someplace else. In most cases you want to pick the highest rate card first and apply all of it until it's paid off and then the next highest card and so on. Remember in some cases it helps the score more to pay off by how maxed out the card is but both strategies have long-term positive impacts to your score. The key is paying above your minimum payments. Okay, let's say your kids beg you for a PlayStation 3 for $499, or maybe you want one yourself. A $499 charge will take almost eight years to pay off doing the minimum payments, and less than three years to pay off if you double the minimum payment each month. By paying just the minimum, you've almost doubled your total cash paid over $400 in interest. Let's say your credit card debt is now consolidated on a few cards and so that they all have the same rates. Because we get tired of saying credit utilization ratio, we're now going to use the acronym CUR. CUR stands for credit utilization ratio and it's the ratio of credit use to credit limits. People who max out their cards tend to have lower credit scores because they are statistically more risky, i.e. more likely to default. Let's go back to Jamie's situation. 
Now, she's done a great job and she's paid off her store card and she's managed to get her credit card debt into cards with the same rates. She needs to work on her individual CUR and her aggregate CUR. For her $500 to use, she wants to make the minimum on both and then apply the rest to the more maxed out card. In this case example, that's the MasterCard. See how the MasterCard has a 66% CUR versus the Visa at 50%? Making a bigger payment to the MasterCard in this example will allow her to lower her CUR. Once she gets these two CURs to be even, she will then want to split the funds to lower them both simultaneously. You've got to start working on your credit utilization ratio or CUR. In addition to following Jamie's example, here are some other things worth trying, especially if you have gained a few score points as of late. You can apply some goodwill tactics. Call your credit card company and tell them you will switch providers unless they will raise your limits. This doesn't always work, but it might, as they really want your business. What does this do? A higher credit limit lowers your CUR, and that will improve your score. Also, you want to ask your credit card company to lower the, your interest rate. This one is a little tougher, but again, the threat of leaving them might help or you can ask me to be converted to another one of their cards with a lower rate. Note, this will lead to a hard inquiry and this won't help your score so much as it will help you to pay less in interest and more in principal. And that should lower your balances. The next one is to make a payment on your card twice a month. Hey, you get paid twice a month most likely, so your monthly outlet, outlay will be the same but this helps you incur less interest expense. And most of the online sites allow you to pay almost every day. So if you don't pay online, you can just simply write down the address and use your own envelopes. We look at Goodwill Tactics as an opportunity to reward yourself for good behavior. Look, behave badly and the credit issuer may lower your limit or raise your APR. So shouldn't you get a limit raise or an APR decrease if you're paying on time? Let's go back to the credit score pi. Okay, what about the length of credit history? Well, not much you can do about this. Well, not much positive. You can hurt it negatively by opening new cards. Well, what about mixture of credit? Well, not the best strategy to aim higher here by getting a mixture if your score is quite low. You probably want to leave this one until you're on more solid ground. What about inquiries? Well, that's simple. No new cards, no new loans until your score is high again. In the next lesson, we will discuss identity theft. Remember, everyone's situation is different. Be sure to contact a financial advisor or a credit counseling professional before making important financial decisions. This VCAST is for educational purposes only and is not a substitute for receiving personalized professional advice.